Honest, J. Nowak. Oh yeah. A pleasure to me all at last, and welcome back to Honest Jay Nowak, Mark of the Line. And let me just say that first of all, I've got, well, pretty much a lot of new material to work with at this point. So, that's just kind of what happens sometimes when it comes to a lot of pre-recorded stuff that takes place. But I might as well go on a record to say that a lot of this is probably going to be worth my time. Because, well, simply put, I might not have too much that I will probably be able to do because this year is where I'm also going to be introducing a few new things as well. You've already seen the kind of stuff that I've been doing with Hot Wheels Hilarity lately with another new series that I have managed to debut some time ago, but next month is where I'm going to have yet another thing for Hot Wheels Hilarity. So tune in next month to pretty much find out what happens then. Until it happens though, Let's get on going with episode number 736 of Honest Jane Nowak with the next part of Mark of the Line, Aston Martin. Yeah, yet another contender in the UK, or England, or Britain, or basically whatever you prefer to call it at this point. America does to happen to have multiple names to it as well, so I'd say the odds are even with that. But, not to get sidetracked... It's time to talk a little bit about Aston Martin because, well, some people have been wanting me to at this point. Also, because, well, at some point, I'm probably going to have a lot of new work to do based on cars. Multiple wheels of steel might be one thing, but uh, let's not go over there yet. Aston Martin is, in fact, something that came around quite a long time ago. For at least 60, 70 years at this point, we've seen Aston Martin really change the face of the English, well, sports car industry. Or probably even the world car industry, as a matter of fact. Because unlike most sports cars out there, Audi has its own particular R8 model that happens to really distinguish itself from the majority of which that are out there. America, of course, has its own signature muscle car lineup like the Mustang, Challenger, and Camaro. And then, of course, we have Ferrari and Lamborghini with their own sort of sporty supercars out there. And then, of course, we have, well, Japan, with the combination of the utilization of most newer models these days, including the Lexus LC and the Toyota Supra, pretty much. But that's just a few examples when it comes to other contenders in the sports car or supercar industry by today's standards. Aston Martin, however, does things a lot differently. If you're very familiar with the lineup as of today, then, well... Such models that currently exist at this point include the Rapide, the 177, the Vantage, the DBS, and of course the more recent Vulcan. Well, not too recent, actually. And then, of course, there have been a few other introductions that Aston Martin was able to accomplish. But let's also not forget about its share of the Vision Gran Turismo lineup of vehicles itself. So Aston Martin pretty much has its own gain based on its popularity and also its repertoire pretty much in terms of what kind of models can really pack the punch out there on the track or basically just on the regular roads. There have been a few occasions of which that I was able to spot some Aston Martins out here in the falls alone. To be fair, I've seen Lamborghinis, I've seen Ferraris, I've seen the Ford GT, I've seen the Shelby Cobra 427, I've seen... Well, basically tons of vehicles out there. I've even managed to catch my eyes on some of the newer Tesla Model Ys, Fisker Karmas, Porsche Taycans, and I even saw a few of the new Ford Bronco. So, I guess that's a pretty good comparison there as to what vehicles I've been able to find out here in recent times that I never really think I would see them with my own eyes, but... Aston Martin is certainly a bit rare by any standards. Mostly because, well, it's in England, not America. But unlike Land Rover, of course, Aston Martin does have a lot of limitations whether or not they can export them over to America or otherwise. So that's pretty much just a bit of a step down when you compare it to other English car companies out there. Land Rover and, well, some others. 
in the world have been able to come to America without any issues at all. Otherwise, I will say that Aston Martin, regardless of where you could possibly find them in the world, they certainly do have a huge record of winning races, impressing crowds, and pleasing audiences across the globe. So, that's pretty much just how greatly Aston Martin's legacy and reputation happens to be by today's standards. So, again... For a company that's all the way out in England, a few thousand miles away, it's no wonder why they're still remembered for probably being one of the best in the industry, and at the same time, one of the most legendary. For something that's been around for decades, it's quite clear that they're going to be around for quite a while. As long as they continue to innovate and invent along the way, we might not see them retiring any time. So, that's pretty much what I got to talk about there. So if you want to see more, go down to my channel. Make sure that you like, subscribe, comment, follow me on social media, and stay on the Hollywood side.